Hello guys, how are you? I'm Hadeep Singh. Welcome back to your own YouTube channel. IELTS updates and recent exams. For more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing test topics, listening, reading, practice test, and speaking, you can just work. Please guys, participate in everyday listening and reading practice test to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam. Please hit the like and subscribe button. Press the bell icon for the upcoming notifications. Don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page IELTS updates and recent exams. Part 1. You will hear a conversation between a staff member from Gaia's Guardians and a man who wants to do something to protect the environment. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Hello, how may I help you? Well, I've been seeing these yellow boxes in front of a lot of houses in my neighborhood. Just wondered what they were for. I noticed your phone number on all of them, so I called. Could you tell me about your business? We do do recycling, but we're not a business. Gaia's Guardians is a non-profit group. We encourage recycling as a way of protecting the environment. I don't know. I mean, it is a good idea. But I really don't read the newspaper every day or anything. And we don't come collect newspapers every day. In fact, we only do pickups every other week. Oh, well, then maybe I could help. I mean, in my neighborhood, there's too much rubbish lying around everywhere. I'd like to help out, I guess. That's great, sir. You're doing the right thing. OK, I need to get your contact information. What's your name, please? Peter Wisrow. Peter... How do you spell your last name? W-I-S-R-O-W? No, actually, it's W-I-S-R-O-U-G-H. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a terrible speller. You're a good speller. It's just that my family are terrible pronouncers. You're quite a card, Peter. OK, now what's your address? Number 168 Bridge Road. That's here in London. How about if I have any questions? I'm sending you a copy of our booklet too. The booklet has our phone number and our email address, helpline at blackcat.com. That's H-E-L-P-L-I-N-E at B-L-A-C-K-C-A-T dot com. But I nearly forgot to ask, what's your postcode? B-S-9-7-P-U. P-S-9-7-B-U? No, that's B as in boy, S9, 7P as in Peter, U. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. So, I'm guessing those yellow boxes I saw are for recycled newspapers. Yes, that is correct, and it's free of charge. Wow, that's good news. Do you recycle anything besides newspaper? Oh, yes, we recycle most everything. Glass, plastic, paper... Oh, so I can put, like, glass and plastic bottles in the box. Sorry again. Things like that you have to bring to our collection center. And where is that? Our main centre isn't that far from you. It's actually right on the east side of Central Park. That new blue building? That's the one. Cool. Hey, what's with all those different coloured boxes outside that place? Oh, that's for the different materials we recycle. The blue is for metal, the green is for glass and plastics, and the yellow, of course, is for paper. 
Hmm. Okay. I'll try and manage to keep all that straight. Oh, no need. They're each labelled. Great. So which one would I put magazines in? Actually, they don't go in any of the bins. Unfortunately, magazines can't be recycled because of the material they're made of. It's such a waste. So, would you be interested in volunteering? Um, I'll think about it. Could you send me some more info? Absolutely. Along with the newspaper box, I'll be sending you our booklet, Savvy. That is S-A-V-V-Y. It tells you about what you can do to protect the environment in your daily life. Plus, it lists things you can do as a volunteer with our group. Hey, that's cool. Thanks. My pleasure. Do you have any other questions or concerns? Nope, that's it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. You'll hear an introduction about how to make a resume and apply for a job. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Welcome everyone to today's seminar on CV and interview skills. Remember, your CV is probably the most important document you will ever write. It opens the door to your career, and that job interview is probably the most important meeting you will ever attend. It's like stepping through that open door. So let's roll up our sleeves and get down to work, shall we? First of all, I cannot possibly tell you everything you need to know about writing a resume in the time we have, but let me tell you that there are dozens of great websites on the internet. These will give you all the suggestions you need. If you look at the paper I gave you, you will see a list of the dozen most popular sites. I can mention a couple of important points, however. One is that your CV or resume should not be too long. A page is about right. Why? HR departments do not have the time to read long documents. Too many people are sending too many CVs. After all, the economic crisis of 2008 is still very much alive. Everyone needs a job now. No matter how short you make that resume, though, you do not want to forget to tell HR how to contact your references. References are people who will give you a recommendation for a job. That's usually an ex-boss or a professor who knows you well. Do not use relatives. I don't care how much your mum loves you. Also, when you send that CV, be sure to include a typed cover letter. A cover letter is a letter where you basically are asking for a job. It's like introducing yourself. Make it brief. The real information about you is on that CV of yours. And please, make sure the letter is typed. It doesn't matter if your handwriting is beautiful or not. Companies only read typed letters. Another point about CVs is you should try to have an attractive layout. Maybe use different type fonts or colours to highlight the information. Some people include a photo. You can find dozens of examples on the internet. Whatever layout you decide to use, however, avoid all spelling and grammar errors. I used to be an HR manager. If I saw a mistake, that CV went into the garbage. Something you write in a CV is a description of your skills and experiences in an interesting way. Mention training, too. I mean, these are what get you hired. Do not just say, I have lots of experience, or I have many skills. Tell that boss what you did, for what company, and when. Better, tell him how well you did it. 
Don't just say I sold houses. Say I sold two million pounds worth of houses in my first year. That is, say something to make the person reading excited and curious. Finally, speaking of CVs, it's sad, but some people actually forget to provide a contact number. That's pretty silly. You wrote a great CV. You have HR dying to meet you, and they don't know how. You forgot your phone number. Oh, sure, if you apply online, they have your email address, but you just showed them you're forgetful. Why are they going to want to talk to you after that? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. All right, moving on to the actual interview. I'll go over what you need to know by the end of it and what you can discuss and negotiate on later once it looks like you'll be offered the job. First, there's working hours. It's not that necessary to hammer out the hours off the bat, especially since it's easy to come off as lazy when the first thing you bring up is how much you're going to have to work. You can also find out more about possible promotions later on. It is important, however, to get a feel for how much you'll be paid. You should make sure the salary range is commensurate with what you're worth, and if you're not, you can move on to better opportunities. Being sure you're going to make what you want to live on is much more important than issues like your pension. You're all so young that your pension is not going to matter for quite a long time. You should find out about what skills you must know for the job and what they'll teach you. In addition, if the company will provide training, you should find out how long the training period is and whether it is paid. Beware of any jobs that want you to train for a long time without appropriate compensation. Speaking of compensation, find out about holidays as well. Do you get paid vacation time? Are you allowed to take personal days? Do you have to work on national holidays? Once you work out these main issues, you can move on later to details like the location and expected attire and whatnot. Wow, that's a lot of information. Let's take a break so you can think everything over and ask any questions you may have. Don't hesitate to come and see me if you need any clarification on all this stuff. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear conversations between a lecturer and a student. Both of them are talking about the taste of music among students. Now look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 24. Peter, let's look at the survey you did yesterday related to the taste of music. So, where did you go? Dr. Goldstein, I went to the music departments of our university and surveyed both type of students who studied vocal or instrumental music. So, what did you find? Well, I found people with diverse tastes, some like folk, traditional, and even rock, jazz also. For playing instruments, also people like to play according to their liking. Hmm, I'm not surprised. What were the favourites specifically? 
Well, to start with, playing instruments, George loves drums. He told me he's been playing drums since his childhood. At that time, he used to play with his schoolmates, and now he plays drums with his friends on weekends, in hotels or restaurants. They have their own band. Hmm. Good, Peter. Do you also play an instrument? What do you like to play? I saw you playing at the last annual function of your college. There, I was the chief guest for the function. My favourite is the guitar. However, I don't play frequently. But if there is an opportunity, I never miss the chance. I started playing it in college. Hmm. Yes, please. Mary likes to play violin. She's a violinist. Emmy likes flute and it's her favourite. Both are freshers. Hmm. What about vocal music? I contacted many students, but most of them like to sing either folk or some traditional songs in their own language. Most of the girls in the department are from Spain, so they sing songs in Spanish and the boys are from India, and obviously they sing their Bollywood-style songs. Hmm, how interesting. Some other students like to listen to opera and love to go see a performance. They say they like to be spectators rather than performing. Thank you, Peter. It's amazing to know about the tastes of different students learning music in our university. I'll definitely call you at the time of performance. Now I want to switch discussion with the professor of Department of Music from another university. The discussion is mainly on the advantages and physiological effects of music. Now look at questions 25 to 30. As the talk continues, answer questions 25 to 30. For the purpose of this discussion, I'm going to divide this talk into two parts. One is advantages and the other is physiological effects of music. Under advantages, we'll talk about music as a leisure activity and music as a career. As a physiological effect, music stimulates and calms us. In front of me is sitting Dr. Roger from Music Department of Alexandria University. Let me ask a question. How is music perceived in your department? Well, students study music more for career. Hardly any people study for leisure. The students opt for either their own musical brands or groups and start organizing live concerts, or some others become music teachers, mentors in schools, or even lectures in colleges and university. Right. So you mean to say diversified options are open to people who study music. Now, what do you say about its physiological aspect? It's great. It seems that music stimulates blood circulation, and the fast music even increases the heartbeat, blood pressure rises, and blood flows quickly into the body. This is the result of exciting music, which is beneficial. Music has another side. In case of soothing music, the body and mind feels relaxed and there is a feeling of calmness. It helps in getting relaxed, refreshed and rejuvenated. So people enjoy music in their own way. It's really nice to know a lot from you about music and its utility. I think this will help not only the general people, but also the students studying music. Thank you for giving time. Thank you, from my side also. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You will hear an extract from a talk given by a production manager on the process of paper making in a factory. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Paper making is the process of making paper, a substance which is used universally today for writing and packaging. In paper making, a dilute suspension of fibers in water is drained through a screen so that a mat of randomly interwoven fibers is laid down. Water is removed from this mat of fibers by pressing and drying to make paper. Since the invention of the Ford Drenier machine in the 19th century, most paper has been made from wood pulp because of cost. But other fiber sources such as cotton and textiles are used for high quality papers. One common measure of a paper's quality is its non-wood pulp content. Example, 25% cotton, 50% rag, etc. Previously, paper was made up of rags and hemp as well as other materials. Paper making, regardless of the scale on which it is done, involves making a dilute suspension of fibers in water and allowing this suspension to drain through a screen so that a mat of randomly interwoven fibers is laid down. Water is then removed from this mat of fibers using a press. The method of manual paper making has changed very little over time despite advances in technologies. The process of manufacturing handmade paper can be generalized into five steps. One, separating the useful fiber from the rest of raw material, example cellulose from wood, cotton, etc. Two, beating down the fiber into pulp. Three, adjusting the color, mechanical, chemical, biological, and other properties of the paper by adding special chemical premixes. Four, screening the resulting solution. 5. Pressing and drying to get the actual paper. Screening the fiber involves using a mesh made from non-corroding and inert material such as aluminium which is stretched in a wooden frame similar to that of a window. The size of the paper is governed by the size of the frame this tool is then completely submerged in the solution vertically and drawn out horizontally to ensure a uniform coating of the wire mesh. Excess water is then removed and the wet matter fiber is laid on top of a damp cloth. The process is repeated for the required number of sheets. This stack of wet mats is then pressed in a hydraulic press very gently to ensure the fiber does not squeeze while drying. Sometimes, the individual sheet is rolled to flatten, harden, and refine the surface finally. The paper is then cut to the desired shape or the standard shape, A4, letter, legal, etc., and packed. The wooden frame is called a decal. The decal leaves the edges of the paper slightly regular and wavy, called decal edges, one of the indications that the paper was made by hand. Decalaged paper is occasionally mechanically imitated today to create the impression of old-fashioned luxury. The impressions in paper caused by the wires in the screen that run sideways are called laid lines and the impressions made usually from top to bottom by the wires holding the sideways wires together are called chain lines. Watermarks are created by weaving a design into the wires in the mold. This is essentially true of oriental made of other substances, such as bamboo. Handmade paper generally folds and tears more evenly along the laid lines. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. So guys, don't forget like, subscribe and share my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. I'll update some recent exams for more updates related to recent IELTS exam writing as topics listening reading practice test and speaking you got guesswork please guys participate in everyday new IELTS listening and reading practice tests to achieve your desired band score in your actual IELTS exam for more IELTS material visit my official website www.ielsupdatesandrecentexams.com the link is given below in the description if you need pdf files of latest IELTS material then please join my telegram channel so guys please write your score below the comment section again thanks for listening god bless you all guys stay tuned stay safe